I met Dr. Hawk about 28 years ago when I first came to Pasadena as a fledgling surgeon. And the first thing I remember people telling me is, oh, Dr. Hawk's wonderful. You, you need to use Dr. Hawk, you know, for you. And, and I, you know, I, I met him just occasionally, but every encounter that I had with him, he was always helpful and he was always kind and he was always polite. And the patients that I sent him always said, oh, he's wonderful, his staff is wonderful, you know. And I would always hear tales, oh, well, my insurance wouldn't cover it, so he wrote it off, you know. And I thought, gosh, this is, you know, this is awesome. And another thing about Dr. Hawk, the, I've never heard anyone say anything bad about him, you know. And the nurses talk, and the nurses always talk to me, because I go running around dressed like a nurse, looking like a nurse. The nurses talk, and they all, every one of them said how kind he was, how good he was with the patients. To me, that's probably the most important endorsement you can get. He's never arrogant. He's always so informed on everything. He's, when I go to tumor conference, you know, I mean, I'm a doer. I take care of things, I, I take care of people, but as far as really staying up with the, the forefront of, of breast cancer, he does. And he knows all the literature, even the literature that's not in his field. And I always learn from him. I always learn from him. And, and, just being with him is always an inspiration and he, he reminded me of a very important thing I was saying in Tumor Conference. I said, you know, if you take the R out of breast, you have a beast. He said, oh yes, Dixie, but if you take the R and the A, you have the best. So I said, only a man would think of that, but that's a very good way to think about it. But Dr. Hawk and I have been friends forever and I know that when I call on him, he will do the very best that he can do to help the patients. He has always been the best friend of the Rose and, and I am just so, so proud that, that we're finally honoring him in the way that he really deserves to be honored because he's a wonderful human being and a, and a great humanitarian and, and I have a feeling that we're still going to do a lot of important things together. I've been, you know, associated with the Rose from its very beginning, and, and the best and the greatest memory is the feeling of uh, reaching out to people who could not get help otherwise, uh, and be able to do it for uh, such a long period of time for so many people, and providing such great help uh, uh, that I wish there were, you know, more organizations and more people who would be doing this. What I'd like to see the Rose expand into over the next 25 years is to provide uh, the services which are not currently available. That includes uh, chemotherapy and medical therapy besides the diagnosis. But my, in my own heart, I'd like the Rose to move towards providing preventative services uh, besides providing diagnostics and treatment services. It's good that we can treat the disease but it would be awesome if we can actually prevent the disease. It would not require, a, you know, it would not require a lot of resources, but getting the Rose to start thinking of providing uh, advice and measures which can actually decrease the risk of disease would be a much bigger help for the community than uh, what we're already providing from the Rose. The biggest need for the Rose right now is uh, one, to expand to other parts of the city and two, to provide services which it does not currently provide. Uh, currently it provides diagnostic services in a very uh, efficient and excellent manner, uh, but it has very limited resources for treatment. Uh, most of the treatment is now channeled through the navigation to either uh, public services or to a carer of volunteer physicians. So if we can expand the carer of volunteer physicians and also uh, established treatment centers at the Rose itself so uh, patients can be treated uh, right there.